Hey, Sammy fam. It has been a crazy week for me. Lots of stuff happening. Not all of it good, so I thought I'd throw myself a little pizza party. Just pulled this out of the oven. This is my kind of Spanish Portuguese pizza. I'll tell you about it in a minute, but first I have to go grab my next pizza out of the oven and I'll bring it right back. Pizza time. So what we got going on here today is this is a pizza that has a uh, sauce that is just Herdez Salsa Verde. This stuff is so good. Uh, I use it in black bean stews. I use it on pizzas. I use it on nachos. Lots of things. So it's just that. Um, queso Blanco, Oaxaca cheese shredded and mixed together, tossed with chopped green onions and chopped cilantro. That's all the green on here. And then this isn't chorizo. This is a chorica or something. It's a Portuguese sausage I saw at the store. And I just fried that up in a pan, tasted it. It's really good, so I'm excited about that. Now this dough recipe is um, Kenji Lopez Alt's uh, Chicago Thin Crust that I have been experimenting with. This one I cooked on a pizza steel uh, at 550, this one I cooked on the same pizza steel, but I turned on the broiler and you see I got a lot more char and maybe a little bit too much, but um, actually this side looks great. Uh, it reminds me more of like a, a New Haven style of pizza, if you guys know what that is. And that's my favorite kind of pizza, so I'm really excited about that. This, look how crispy, crispy thin cracker crust. Smells delicious. This is super simple. This is, um, Arabiata red sauce with just store-bought, just a little bit spread edge to edge. Then we have just a little bit of part skim mozzarella smattered, spackled over here. Not too much. Uh, mozzarella like melts and spreads so much that I, I like it when you can see the red sauce, you know. And then we have thinly sliced red onion, torn up marinated artichoke hearts, and anchovies that you can kind of barely see in here. I'm super excited about this. Let's chop it all up and get eating and talking. The mailman just looked at me through the front window. That's pretty funny. We don't have any curtains put up for these windows to my right that leak out onto the street. You know, still in the process of picking things out for the house. Mmm. And we have, what do we got here? My homemade ranch sauce. Buttermilk, anchovy, mayonnaise, sour cream. Green onion or chives, I forgot which I put in here. Um, a bunch of seasonings, Trader Joe's. Uh, ranch seasoning, white pepper, paprika, Worcestershire, liquid smoke, garlic. There's a lot of stuff that goes into ranch. A little bit of salt. You know, ranch is kind of just whatever you make it. I make a whole different version of ranch for my wife that's a lot more dill heavy and less smoky. Ooh, what are we going to go for first? Let's go for the one that's been out of the oven the longest, this kind of chorizo-esque. Oh, I want one with more sausage on it. Uh, Latin pizza, the slightly less baked one, but... Mm -hmm. Wow. The herby freshness of the cilantro and the green onion with that green salsa and the kind of sweet and spicy sausage. You get your saltiness from the Oaxaca. Mm. Oaxaca cheese is like 
I think a bit like Mexican mozzarella. So good. There's a lot of variants and brands, but um, I find my favorite is not actually like the expensive stuff you can get at Whole Foods or something. It's just the, um, the, the tropical, you know, that brand of cheeses and meats, tropical or tropical or however you say it. But their Oaxaca is really good. Mm. And the crust. So this, um, this Kenji Lopez Alt Chicago Thin Crust, very easy to mix up. Um, you know, just flour, salt, sugar, water, olive oil, and instant yeast. And then you, you mix it up and leave it in your fridge for a cold ferment for, uh, it says at least like one day. Um, I've made three pizzas from this. First one I try after five days and it left a little bit to be desired in terms of flavor development in the dough. I didn't think it was tangy and flavorful enough. It tasted kind of flowery to me almost. But this is after I think seven or eight days. Plus I pulled it out of the fridge and let it kind of rise for probably about eight hours since I got up this morning. And it has an amazing Delicious tangy flavor. I'm gonna start making this dough all the time. I have to try and see if I can put it in the freezer and fridge it. Put it in the freezer and freeze it. And if then, when I pull it out the thaw, if it'll still perform. If it does, then I can have it ready whenever I want. Mm. A little bit of ranch. Sometimes all you really need is some comfort food. And it's been a, a crazy beginning to the new year. So much upheaval going on in my life. Moved to Albany from New York City, settling down. That's going okay. But then my 95 year old grandmother just died, my last grandparent. Which is sad, but you know. It's something we've been preparing for, for a long time. So I feel like I'm dealing with it okay. Everybody's dealing with it okay. But it does make you reminisce. And it does make you think about mortality. And I have to say, I'm extremely grateful to my grandparents. Without my grandparents, I wouldn't have this house. They've done so much for me and they continue to do so, even though they're not here anymore. Speaking of the house, God, we're getting so much work done. I think right now I have like 40 to $50,000 in just deposits on jobs out. Uh, the jobs that haven't even started yet. It's so, like waiting on people to get parts and schedule things. Mm -hmm. And the waiting part is just so crazy. Let's try some of this really nice, super thin and crispy, more Italian-y pizza with the anchovies and the artichoke hearts and the red onions and the arabiata red sauce. We might need to open a pizzeria, y'all. Mm. I also dusted this dough after I spread it out real thin. I dusted it with garlic powder and then I spread the sauce on top of that. It's magical. been a little bit sad that not having bought a car I can't go to my favorite pizza place anymore um, 
It's in New Haven, Connecticut. And I used to be able to get on the train in New York City and go to New Haven. But from here in Albany, there's no direct connection. I would have to go three hours down to New York City and then three hours up to New Haven, which is too much for a pizza. But this gets really close to New Haven style pizza. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Kenji. I'm making this dough all the time. And the main difference between these two pizzas is I ran the broiler on high for the whole time this one cooked. I think I would do that again. Because the bottom, the bottom looks great. The top might be a little bit crispy. Maybe I need to run the boiler on medium. Or maybe I need to turn the pizza more. Like halfway through so we get some more even top bake. Mm. But I'm very happy with this is like a jumping off point. I mean, we're already right near the finish line of where I want to be pizza wise. And honestly, I had also been very sad that I've been having trouble making pizza to my standards here. You know, I hadn't been able to find a store bought dough that I liked. Problem solved, make it yourself. Um, you know, I've been not used to this oven that I'm not a huge fan of, but this broiler method, preheat the oven to 550 for like an hour with the pizza steel on the top rack and then turn on the broiler when you put in the pizza. Heaven. Now I'm stuck, I have a decision to make. My birthday's in a couple weeks, um, February 14th. I'm very excited, I'm going back home uh, to see my parents. Hopefully see my, my aunt as well. I haven't seen them for a couple years. It'll so be, be so good to see my mom, give her a hug. She was there with her mom when she passed on the whole other side of the country. But right after that, we're gonna be there for a few days. And then coming back for my birthday, and we were, I was just talking with my wife about like, what should we do for birthday dinner? And I said, you know, I'll, I'll cook. We'll be getting back from my little vacation. Like, we won't wanna go out to eat. I was thinking of making the squid ink angel hair uh, tomato and clam pasta that we just uh, came up with last week that's so delicious and so easy to make. But now that I have this pizza nailed down, I might have to do birthday pizza party. I'm not sure. Mm. This is the highlight of my week. One of. There are other good things happening. Some things I can't tell you guys about yet. But you know what? When we're getting around the house, I've been painting a lot, doing a lot of paint prep, sanding walls, filling cracks, trying to figure out why the previous owners uh, put a lot of putty on the walls and then didn't sand it and just painted over it. It's weird. It's a lot of work to smooth it out. Especially with this arm, you know, still kind of recovering from the surgery I had in December. I can only do so much scrubbing and stuff before it starts to really hurt. But I just try to work on like house projects just a little bit, bit each day. And we'll eventually get through, you know, all the stuff we want to do ourselves that we're not having professionals do. like. I'm not installing the new boiler. I'm not fixing the foundation. I 
I can paint, I can stain, hopefully sand all the trim that's, you know, 100 years old and has been partially destroyed by the previous owner's dogs. What else can I do? And I can pay people to do things. That's a, a good skill. Mm. And I am super excited. I know this is boring sounding, but I'm super excited to get a new boiler. Because right now I have like a 40-year-old boiler that's very inefficient. And I have two 30-year-old water heaters that somehow are still working. But the new boiler is going to be so much more efficient. I think like 25% more efficient, estimated. And instead of having giant tanks of hot water just waiting for you to use them for a shower or for heating the floors or whatever, um, it will just on demand send hot water wherever you need it, be it the radiators to heat the house, uh, the floors and like the back of the house to heat up the tile floor and make that super comfortable or hot water for your shower or washing your clothes, whatever. So I think even though it's wildly expensive to buy and install, um, in the long run, in the very, very long run, we'll at least be doing a favor for the environment and um, eventually it'll pay off in terms of energy cost. And you get tax breaks for installing energy efficient stuff, like tax break for this, tax break for that. Fortunately, my new windows don't get a tax break. It's too bad, but that's okay. There's just so much to learn being a homeowner. I hope you guys are having a good new year, new year though. Um, I'm trying to get back into exercising more like after my multiple surgeries this year I kind of took a hit on that and then like moving and getting used to being in a new place but I've gotten back on the exercise bike when it's not snowy outside I try to get out and get all my long walks in um, so I think and hopefully I don't get injured this year but it should be a very healthy year And I am very grateful for what health I do have, because I know that I'm lucky. Mm. And I'm blessed to have this pizza. Now you have to think of what wants to do next. I'm kind of thinking about, you know, I just did that Indian food video. I love Indian food and I really want to do like a uh, chicken tiki masala tikka chicken tikka masala like pizza video maybe or maybe butter chicken pizza mm. or what's that spinach curry sagwala or something like that that'd be good on a pizza oh. well before I eat all this I gotta Make sure I share some with my wife. And I think she's going to be excited with the results because she loved New, ha New Haven style thin crust pizza too. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time.